Israelites that's so caught up in the world. When I say Israelites, I'm talking about Israelites in the truth. They're so caught up in the world, so caught up in what's going on in, in their life. They don't forget about the commandments and the orders that God gave you. See, you're forgetting what the scripture says. The scripture says that you have not chosen me. Christ spoke to every Israelite individually and said, hey, this, was the, this wasn't your choice. It was mine. I called you. Now that you called, you got to go and make your way prosperous. The way the Bible reads, the way the scripture reads, only diligence can make your calling and election sure. But you got Israelites that lost focus and their mind ain't really on the building of the nation, the building of the truth. Their mind is on what's going on in the world. And they losing out. So let's go back to Luke chapter 19. Christ is looking. You got to remember what, what, uh, what Christ said. In St. John chapter 4, he said, God the Father is only looking for true worshipers. That's going to be dealing with the truth. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Read it again. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Read on. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable. Now when they heard these things, he added and spake a parable. Read on. Because he was not in Jerusalem. Because he was close to Jerusalem. Read on. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Yeah, they thought that they was about to be out of there. Christ was like, no, nah, this is going to take some time. <laughs> this is going to take a process of time. And let me let you know what's going to be happening throughout this process of time that this is going to take. That's what this parable is about. Read on. Verse 12. Come on. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country. That nobleman is Jesus Christ. Read on. To receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Okay, so Christ went back into heaven. Everybody understand that? To get a kingdom and come back and share it with us, with the Israelites. Everybody got that, right? Let's go from there, hold that, and let's just verify these facts and get the book of St. John chapter 7. St. John chapter 7. St. John's chapter 7, and we're going to read 33. Don't go past the verses I'm telling you. 33 to 36. St. John's chapter 7, verse 33 to 36. Read that. Then said Jesus unto them. Read on. Yet a little while am I with you. Yet a little while am I with you. Read on. And then I go unto him that sent me. Okay, so where he was going back to? God the Father. Read on. You shall seek me, and shall not find me. He ain't going to be on this earth. Read on. And where I am? Thither you cannot come. And we cannot go into heaven where he's at. We got to stay on this earth. Read on. Then said the Jews among themselves. Read on. Whither will he go? That we shall not find him. Read on. Will he go into the dispersed among the Gentiles? Will he go to the Israelites that was dispersed among the Gentiles? Read on. And teach the Gentiles? And teach those Gentiles because they was calling the Israelites that was dispersed Gentiles. Read on. What man is saying is this, that he said, ye shall seek me and shall not find me. Read on. And where I am, Thither ye cannot come. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. Is that it? Come. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back to Luke. Chapter 19. And what verse did you leave off at? 13? Verse 12. Read verse 12 one more time. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country. Read on. To receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Okay, so Christ went to a far country. He went back to God the Father to get the kingdom and to return back to share this kingdom with the nation of Israel. Everybody got that, right? Okay, read verse 13. And he called his ten servants. Read it again. And he called his ten servants. Read it one more time. And he called his ten servants. Read on. And delivered them ten pounds. Read on. And said unto them. Read on. Occupy till I come. Okay, so now remember, this is a parable. You know, and in, in, in a parable, everything is not abruptly clear on what Christ is talking about. He's coding everything that he's talking about. Everybody understand that? He sent for ten servants. Read that one more time. And he called his ten servants. Those ten servants that he called is... The nation of Israel that came back into the truth. Okay? Those ten servants that he called is the nation of Israel that's going to be coming back into the truth. Why did God call them ten servants? Because that's how God deals with his military order. In his military order, God lines it up by tens. And the Israelites that God called back into the truth, he said he would call them back into the truth and make them a, an exceeding great army. Let's go from there. Hold that. Let's go from there and get the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel 37. Verses 10 through 11. The book of Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 10 through 11. Read that. 
So I prophesied as he commanded me. Read on. And the breath came into them. Read on. And they lived and stood up upon their feet. Read on. And exceeded. Oh, what? And exceeded. Read on. Great army. So this, this company of Israelites that's coming back is supposed to be God's army. Everybody got that, right? Read on. Verse 11. Come on. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Who came back? The whole house of Israel. Who was that exceeding great army? The whole house of Israel. How many Israelites? The whole house of Israel. How many tribes? The whole house of Israel. How many Israelites? The whole house of Israel. Yeah, all the tribes of Israel. All the tribes. The whole house. The whole family. Do everybody understand that? Let's go from there. Let's go from there. And let's get the book of Revelation chapter 5. And let's see how God deals with his military order. Revelation chapter 5, verse 11. Revelation chapter 5, verse 11. Read that for me. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne. Read on. And the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000. Read it one more time. And the number of them was 10,000. Read on. Times 10,000. 10,000 times 10,000. Read on. And thousands of thousands. Okay, so you clearly see that he, he, uh, he lines them up in tens. Do everybody understand that? Everybody got that, right? Okay, let's go back to the book of Luke. Let's go back to the book of Luke, chapter 19. If that's not enough for you, um, you can also add Luke cha uh, Leviticus chapter 25. Be enough. But, you know, I always have a, you know, one of those smoking gun scriptures. <laughs> Luke, uh, Leviticus chapter 25, verse 53. We can read that before we go back to Luke. Actually, read 55. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 55. Read that. For unto me, read it again. For unto me, read on. The children of Israel are servants. It's very important that this keep being pointed out. It's very important that when you are educating people on God's will, that you keep pointing out that God has no other servants outside of the nation of Israel. Do everybody understand that? It's very important that you point out that God has no other people but the Israelites. Do everybody understand that? The ancient Israelites. Everybody got that, right? Okay, now let's go back to the book of uh, Luke chapter 19. And we're going to start at verse 13 one more time. Luke chapter 19, verse 13. Read that for me, please. And he called his ten servants. Okay, so that ten servants represents the whole house of Israel. Everybody got that, right? Servants, the Israelites are servants unto him. The ten represents they came back as an army. Everybody got that, right? Read on. And delivered them ten pounds. Read on. And said unto them, occupy till I come. So what does this mean? mean this means that Christ said, I'm leaving. Okay, I'm going to get the kingdom. <laughs> and I'm coming back and I'm going to share this kingdom with you. But while I'm gone, I need you to take possession of this nation. While I'm gone, I need you to, or I want you to ran properly. Occupy to possession of it. I'm going somewhere and I say, listen, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be gone. I need you to stay in my house until I get back. Who's now controlling that house? Huh? Who now who's now supposed to be making sure that everything goes right in that house? Huh? Okay, so now this is what Christ is saying. Make sure that everything go right until I get back. Everybody got that, right? Read on. Verse 14. Come on. But his citizens hated him. But what? His citizens hated so him. So now Christ done gave an order. Listen, make sure everything go right. So now you had the Israelites going out trying to bring Israelites back. Tell them about Christ. Tell them about the kingdom that was coming. And you had Israelites that didn't want to deal with it. These Israelites were in the world. And these Israelites are also in the truth. They didn't want to wait for Christ to come back. They didn't want to deal with the nation of Israel. They hated what Christ represented. They hated what Christ, what the gospel is talking about that Christ is going to do. I understand that. Everybody got that? Tell them where you at. Read that verse one more time. Verse 14. Come on. But his citizens hated him. Read it again. But his citizens hated him. But his citizens hated him. Why did God have to actually look for a new leadership because the old leadership, which was under the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were corrupt. 
So God told somebody else to take possession, which was the original apostles. Do everybody understand that? Everybody got that, right? We'll go through some of that later to give you on that. But his citizens hated him. Read on. And sent a message after him. Read it again. And sent a message after him. Read on. Saying, we would not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom. Having done what? Received the kingdom. Read on. Then he commanded these servants to be called. And now, tell them what verse you're in. Middle of 15. Okay, read verse 15 one more time. And it came to pass. I want y'all to focus on that and tell me what that's talking about. Real, real fast. No, no, and it came to pass. What is that talking about? No, and it came to pass. What is that talking about? And it came to pass. What is that talking about? Okay, over here. What is it talking about? Okay, the rock, chief priest, the rock, stand up, please. And it came to pass. It's talking about what? Yeah, it took some time to go by. Do everybody understand that? Came to pass, meaning a whole lot of time went by. I'm going to take y'all through this again because y'all really need to understand this. Let's go back up. Let's go back up to verse, uh, let's go back up to verse uh, 12. Read verse 12 one more time. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country. Read on. To receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Who was the nobleman that went into a far country? Okay, and he went to get the kingdom of heaven and the king, in his kingdom, the kingdom of Christ. And he's going to come back and share the kingdom of Christ with the Israelites. Do everybody understand that? Read on. Verse 13. Come on. And he called his ten servants. That ten servants is representing what? The nation of Israel. The whole house of Israel, right? That came back in, in an exceeding great army, right? Read on. And delivered them ten pounds. Those ten pounds is the work that Christ gave the Israelites to do till he returned. Everybody understand that? Okay, when you come into the truth, you find out that God has charged you with some things. The scripture says, pray ye therefore that there be laborers in the vineyard. Like I came in here, I think it was the last, last Sabbath day, and I said, paying your tights ain't what the truth is about. That ain't it. That ain't all you're supposed to do. Okay, we have to bring the Israelites back. Do everybody understand that? Everybody is charged with making sure Israelites come back into the truth. Do everybody got that? Everybody understand that? How do you do that? All you do is teach. All you do is talk. You got Israelites that have been in the truth for 10 years and never tell nobody about being an Israelite. Do you realize that? When Christ come back, what you going to tell them? <laughs> you got Israelites that have been in the truth for a whole year. Scared to tell people about being an Israelite. What you scared of? Huh? Y'all want to tell me what you scared of? Huh? You know what you scared of, being rejected, being hated, being kicked out, you know? Being cursed out, being left, ostracized. Nobody, everybody that you once loved don't love you no more. Yeah, you know what you're afraid of? But that's what Jesus Christ went through. And this is what he said that is required for believers to go through. You're going to be rejected the same way he was rejected. But you still have to do the work that he did. Do everybody understand that? So those 10 pounds is that work that Christ put in your lap when you came to the truth. Bam! Right there in your lap. Now you're in the truth. Help build this nation. Now you in the truth. We were, what does the prophecy say? A great multitude that no man can number. Get it done. Bam. Now you in this truth. So some of you think you fill out a tight envelope. I'm, I did what I'm supposed to do. I don't understand it. You got families in the truth. Families now. And, and you got some families that, that allow their children to say they don't want to be in the truth no more. I'm, I'm, I'm lost on that one. Somebody help me with that one. Because I, I thought those were your children. I thought that was your child. How is your child telling you what he ain't going to do and what he is going to do? Hello? I ain't talking about a girl. I'm talking about a child. How your child say, I don't want to be in the truth no more. I give, my, I give the nation my resignation. Guess what? I'm going to take it. Don't know nobody say, I'm going to give you my resignation because I'm going to snatch it. And then you ain't going to no longer be in this nation. But how is a parent allowing their child to sit up in their house on the Sabbath day while they worship the Sabbath? That's strange to me. You know why that's strange to me? Because I remember, I remember a, a guy called Joshua. And when he spoke about the truth, he said, that's for me and my house.
We think, <laughs> let me tell you something. Every aspect of life is what God expects you to do. He expects you to do your job as a mother. He expects you to do your job as a father. He expects you to do your job as a wife. He expects you to do your job as a husband. He expects you to be, do your job as a citizen of the nation of Israel. He expects you to get it all done. 